Hi, I'm Kristen, and this is the Simple Handmade Everyday Podcast, where I talk about living a creative, intentional life. I like to chat about quilting, sometimes knitting, what I'm reading and watching, and a little bit about keeping a cozy, organized home. I've got my cup of tea in hand, so let's settle in for a chat. This is episode 62. Welcome! I'm so glad to be here. You know, it's funny, I just um, started recording a few minutes ago, and then I had to stop because I heard honking because Santa just went down our street in our sleepy little town there is a little mini Santa parade that is going up and down every residential street in town over um, the for yes Saturday and Sunday and so I knew that we were scheduled for between 10 and 11 on Sunday so I told my family I'm gonna go record but if you hear Santa you call for me and so as soon as I sat down to record, I started hearing the honking and had to run down and grab the kids who are all adults and um, make them wave at Santa. It was very fun. It was very fun. You know, this year, it's just, it's the thing to do. We had the same thing for Easter Bunny. <laughs> they went up and down all the streets. And I think it's a, a really fun thing to do because every other type of holiday on high street and all those types of celebrations obviously were all canceled or done very differently and so um it was very fun to see santa and the grinch and an elf and it was very fun but now i have to come down off that high (laughs) and i get to talk to you guys i realize that i keep forgetting to talk about my cup of tea which i'm sure you are immensely interested in and has been a little bit on repeat for a while since i got um, a big bonus pack from harney and sons but today is the hot cinnamon spice which is very Christmassy. Christmas and cinnamon really go together with me. So um, I am loving my um, cinnamon spice tea, hot cinnamon spice in this adorable mug that I got my daughter for Christmas last year from Anthropology. So it's uh, super fun. So uh, are you guys ready for Christmas? If you if you celebrate it, I know not everybody does, but uh, so happy holidays and Merry Christmas to to everyone out there. It's December 20th, so we are really getting down to it, and um, I feel pretty good. Um, I skipped podcasting last weekend. I always uh, said that I would not apologize for not podcasting because, like, who really cares? But I made the decision to put it off to this weekend because I was not feeling prepared, Um, and I just felt like I needed to to get some stuff done for Christmas. And um, so last weekend was some decorating and um, doing the gift inventory, you know, to make sure that we knew what was what. And, um, and I'm in, I'm pretty good shape here. I think I'm done shopping as a matter of fact, and have been for a little while. But uh, yesterday, I just, you know, really kind of pulled out all the stops. And I started wrapping. And that was really fun. So this year, I am definitely going with more natural wrapping. So I bought some brown craft paper, some baker's twine, some um, regular twine, and paper gift tags. And they were kind of cute. And I, I, I found one that had a mix of um, white tags and brown tags. And I was thinking, like, you know, if you go brown paper with twine and brown <laughs> tag, it's very, there's nothing popping on that. So I really I thought that I might like the white tags better. I found a mix and they have a cute little punch, a little like a cutout. So it's, um, it's been, what do I want to say, punched. And then when you get it, you can just kind of punch out the, like there's a snowflake, one has a reindeer. And then I was just able to kind of tape those on as additional decorations on the, on the wrapping. And I, I learned some things pretty quickly. Um, that, uh, you know, like how to wrap it, that I definitely like to just wrap the twine around one direction. I think it's a lot easier to get off for the for the person. And I just tied it in the bow on the back. That way people can just easily untie the twine and I can hopefully reuse those um, and hopefully even reuse the gift tags, which are just strung through. Um, I also made lots of like learning curve mistakes of wrapping up the twine and securing it and all the stuff and going, oh, now I have to put the tag on. So you got to put the tag on first. And um, and then I decorated it with, um, I had a big thing of cinnamon sticks, like one of those large McCormick things. And I don't even know how old those cinnamon sticks are. So I was happy to sacrifice them in the name of package decorating. So a cinnamon stick, um, I clipped some rosemary. We have a big rosemary bush in the backyard. Uh, so it smelled really good in here with the cinnamon and rosemary. And then a few weeks ago, I made this um, 
natural wreath through this little online workshop, our Zoom, yeah, Zoom workshop. And I had some extra uh, materials, some cedar and pine, um, and I feel like there were, and some eucalyptus. So I was able to kind of clip those and add those with the cinnamon tucked into the, um, the twine. I was a little worried about animals getting to it because we have a cat and a dog but so far so good i was also frankly a little worried that my family would think that they um it was kind of weird and that the packages would seem kind of boring because you know you we're used to the big sparkly packages right um but everybody loved them everybody loved them so there's quite a mix because other people have wrapped stuff before i even all that stuff showed up on my doorstep i also ordered some ribbon um like an inch and a half wide with wires and then i found that i had actually had some i have a uh, a long time friend who always shows her packages at christmas time and you know they're wrapped in beautiful paper but instead of you know just like the little manufactured bows she just does this wired ribbon and and just ties a bow and she just uses those ribbons year after year and they are so pretty so i did do one package with that and i've got some more ribbon um, coming next year and that could be very pretty on top of a uh the uh, brown craft paper as well. So what I really like about all of this is, you know, um, wrapping paper isn't recyclable. It's got too much, you know, non-paper stuff in it. So I've got actual recyclable, recyclable paper, maybe even reusable. That could be kind of a cool look, kind of a crumpled look. Um, I can reuse the the baker's twine, the twine, the tags, you know, all of that. And that just makes me feel really good. And they look really cute. Someday, um, I would like to, maybe sometime, I'll put like a thing on my calendar for July that I should just make some drawstring bags, um, gift bags that we could use over and over. I think that would be kind of fun, but I do like sort of the crispness of an actually wrapped package. So, so that was really fun. And you know what I did? I'll talk more about it a little bit later on the podcast, but I watched, um, the Christmas episode of the detectorists. So this is my thing right now is I'm watching, um, Christmas episodes of my favorite British TV shows. <laughs> and so it was a very delightful hour and a half or so that I was wrapping gifts and watching The Detectorist. So that was really, really fun. So we also yesterday, we, we did our baking. My husband and I made a couple batches of fudge, um, which is his family tradition, which you know we have adopted and I love. And then my daughter, Chloe, and I got in the kitchen in the afternoon. And um, I was actually looking for a little inspiration a little different christmas cookies to make um i'm not sure we found that quite yet but we made the uh, uh, we asked everybody did a little survey of what what christmas goodies um do you like because i'm not really giving stuff out this year um so it's just we're just making it for us so the boys both like the they're called um what are they called peanut butter blossoms like a little peanut butter cookie with a chocolate kiss in it so we made those i made christmas crack which i realize is kind of an insensitive name for i just don't know what else to call it it is the most unlike me type of christmas treat ever but it's my favorite it's the salting crackers with the melted butter and brown sugar on top with the chocolate chips on top i mean it is just like everything that i should not be eating but man do i love that stuff and um so we made those two things which are family favorites and then chloe decided she wanted to make gingerbread men so she made the dough yesterday we'll probably cook those this afternoon um honestly they seem very molassesy the dough is quite molassesy so i'm not 100 percent sure that's really going to pan out but um that was really fun and then we finally decorated the tree which has been just sitting there with lights on it since thanks the day after thanksgiving which is totally fine with me but we're kind of lightly decorated this year and um yeah it's just i'm i'm ready to go i actually have two weeks off of work i worked really hard at the beginning of this through this month to um get everything done for all of my clients so that I could uh, take a couple weeks off. And um, a lot of us have this off. My two boys are done with their finals. My husband has the next two week off and, and Chloe doesn't quite, but she's got quite a lot of time. So I am ready for some rest and relaxation. And in addition to some baking of gingerbread men this afternoon, I think Chloe and I are going to do what we call coffee house time, which used to mean that we would go to a coffee house with our laptops order some fun drinks, and sit in companionable silence <laughs> as we each work on our own projects. I used to write blog posts, and she would do writing. Um, 
I've done journaling, things like that. And so we can't do that anymore. So we, a couple times now, have created that own, that same vibe, our own vibe in um, our living room, which is also my office. So I, we even have a little Bluetooth speaker that I will put on like a coffee house playlist and we'll make a couple lattes and we'll just sit there and, and do our thing. It's just fun to do something in that like just really fun creative environment. So I think we're going to do that this afternoon and I'll talk a little bit more about this at the end of the podcast, but I think I'm going to do some um, reflection and journaling and goal planning for, for 2021. So I hope you guys are, are ready for your holidays. You're winding down um, and just ready to kind of just sink into the restfulness um, that kind of comes, you know, the last week of the year. This is definitely going to be the last um, podcast for 2020. And, you know, I think we all have high hopes for 2021. So before we get going on the quilting segment, I would like to thank the Fat Quarter Shop for sponsoring the podcast. Fat Quarter Shop is a one-stop show for quilting fabrics and supplies for quilters around the world. They stock quilt shop quality fabrics, pre-cuts, quilt kits, patterns, notions, and even cross-stitch supplies. Join the Fat Quarter Shop and Moda Fabrics as they sew the serendipity quilt benefiting Make-A-Wish Central and South Texas. This organization grants the wishes of children with life-threatening medical conditions to enrich them with hope, strength, and joy. Serendipity is a row quilt of sampler blocks that simply fall into place. This beautiful quilt features Spring Brook by Cory Yoder from Moda Fabrics. We encourage you to donate just $5 for the use of each Serendipity pattern. Fat Quarter Shop and Moda Fabrics will match up to $30,000 of the donations raised. You can also participate in the Serendipity Stitch Along. I will put a link in the show notes to the Stitch Along and the donation page and definitely check that out. I also wanted to mention right now that the Fat Quarter Shop has so generously uh, decided to sponsor a $35 gift card giveaway to one lucky listener or follower. I will hold the giveaway on Instagram and I'll put a link in the show notes, but if you follow me on Instagram, just check it out there. Um, I'm not sure right now how long I'll let that go. It'll be in the post, but good luck for that. And once again, thank you, Fat Quarter Shop. Definitely support them as they are such friends of this podcast. So um, what are you working on these days? Are you sewing gifts? I don't sew Christmas gifts usually. Um, I just I don't I just find that to be too much pressure. So what I've really been working on is the handpiece quilt along is going to be um, coming out in 2021, and Patty and I are still busily stitching away on our sample quilts, which just is just taking all of my sewing time in a very pleasurable way. I just um, I love hand sewing. I just really do. What I don't love is prepping for hand sewing, but you know, it, you got to take the good with the bad. So um, the, the good part of all of that is that I've been watching a ton of really fun TV that only I enjoy. You know, nobody else in my house really wants to binge on acorn shows like me. So um, that has been really fun. So definitely um, if you are interested in learning to hand sew, stitching along with a very supportive community. Um, definitely think about joining the uh, Hand Pieced Quilt Along Facebook group so that you get all your notifications of when the pattern's going to be released and when the blog posts are released and things like that. So we have such a good time in that group. It is supportive and people kind of do their own things with these patterns sometimes. The differences in fabrics and how people lay things out is just so fun and inspiring to watch. So definitely um, think about joining that Facebook group so that you're on top of all of that. So um so besides that a pattern that I'm sewing right now, all my quilting inspiration has been coming from looking at the uh, the QuiltCon quilts. So the the acceptances and rejections have have gone out, and um, if you check out the QuiltCon reject or QuiltCon reject 2021 hashtags, oh my gosh, so many fabulous quilts. I mean, people are so talented and so imaginative. I look at some of these quilts and I just think, my brain doesn't work that way. I so appreciate looking at them and I, you know, wish that I could, um, you know, think up these types of quilt patterns that people are doing, but it just does not come naturally to me. But it, it's like going to an art show and I just, I just love it. So if you haven't checked out those, and then obviously um, people are also posting their acceptances, but um, 
I'm definitely going to save, I think, a lot of that kind of viewing for the actual quilt, what's it called, QuiltCon Together or something like that, the actual QuiltCon virtual show. So, um, yeah, that's been really fun. The other thing that I wanted to mention is I was the lucky recipient of a, of a giveaway from American, no, Modern American Vintage. They make these, I'll put a link in the show notes, they make these handcrafted wooden sewing tools, and they are a uh, amazing so i one um they seem to make them in in groups of three so there's a hera marker and there's a seam ripper and then um kind of like a stiletto or something you might use to poke out the corners with, when you've sewn something and you're turning it right side out and it is with the most beautiful wood it feels good it smells good so it you know i, f- I feel like as as you continue on in the sewing journey um making sure that you have the tools that you need and quality tools is is so much fun so you know i was using like a takeout chopstick to <laughs> poke out the corners of my thing before now i have a beautiful tool that makes me smile every time i pick it up and um it and it came with this little handwritten note that told me how to care for them and um oh so amazing so i'm going to put a link in the show notes but go over and take a look um, they put together these amazing combinations of woods and with inlays and things like that that are just so gorgeous. So definitely check out Modern American Vintage. Um, the other thing, since I'm not doing much sewing, I'm just going to talk about other quilting related things. If free motion quilting is on a bucket list for you, it's something that you think that you want to do, but you don't really know where to start, my good friend over at String and Story, Holly Ann, is launching her course again, which is only open, I think, twice a year, the Free Motion Quilting Academy. And I will put a link in the show notes, but if you go over to that site, you will see gazillions of um, customer testimonials of people who have really just gotten over themselves and learned to free motion quilt. So like I said, that um, class is only open, uh, I think it's twice a year, so this is the time to do it. So I'll put a link in the show notes. I am affiliate for it for full disclosure, but it's because I believe in it. And um, I'm in the Facebook group where people are always posting their the results and their practice pieces and you can just see the growth and it just it makes me so happy because I mean I personally know that sometimes that is the hardest part of quilting to kind of get over is the fear of ruining your quilt in the last moment um, you know after you put in all the the work of piecing being afraid to quilt it and ruin it now I know that I've been sending my quilts to a long armor <laughs> for, for the last year or so but a lot of that is really because I don't really have a proper quilting space right now and I do hope to get back to um, free motion quilting some of my own quilts at some point. Maybe some of the smaller ones. I really like sending the larger ones to uh, Deanna Senzano, my long armor, and she does such a, a beautiful job. And the last thing that I want to mention is, are you um, listening to the Quilt Fiction podcast? My friend Frances um, has this podcast and she just, she writes stories for us for free. So you've probably listened to Friendship Album and the, um, Aunt Jane of Kentucky, where she read that. Well, she has just released a Christmas story, um, featuring Eula, who is a character, as we know, from the Friendship Album. And it is delightful. I will put a link in the show notes, but you're probably already subscribed. And if you're not, go find the Quilt Fiction podcast and you will have hours and hours of wonderful listening ahead of you. Um, I've said many times that I would listen to Frances read the phone book if phone books existed anymore, (laughs) but she has a beautiful voice. She's a great reader. So definitely go check that out. I've been so focused on hand piecing lately. I'm not indulging in any other um, textile crafts, but it's been so fun because my daughter Chloe has been. I've mentioned that she's a crocheter and she's looking for her next crochet project right now. But in the meantime, she has taken a cross stitch. Um, I think last uh, episode I posted the little ugly Christmas sweater ornament, um, which she made for um, on my behalf for my 18 year old son. This is the last year he's getting an ornament. And um, I was just thinking today that I need to figure out a way to finish the back that I probably need to um, write his name in the year and maybe embroider that and glue it on the back. It's on a little hoop, like a three inch hoop or something. So I need to do something that's that's nice for the back there. Um, and I am very excited to report that she wants to learn to knit. So I'm gonna teach her to knit. Um, yesterday, um, she, uh, 
did a little curbside pickup at Michael's for a hoop because she did another kind of Christmas cross stitch thing, which is adorable, and um, ordered some cotton yarn. And I think the best, one of the best ways to learn to knit if you do not want to do a scarf is to do dishcloths. The downside of starting with this, with dishcloths is that cotton yarn is not stretchy, doesn't have that same fun feel in your hands like wool does, but she is an experienced crocheter, so she knows the difference between yarns. Um, but it's a perfect way to practice the knit and purl stitches and learning to increase and decrease. And um, Minky, my friend Minky did this a while back, uh, like maybe a year ago. I kind of taught her to knit, but then she really just went and found videos. And she just knitted up the most gorgeous pile of dishcloths, which I'm not sure she's ever gonna use as dishcloths, but just, just found all kinds of cool stitches and then just, you know, did a eight inch square of that stitch pattern, you know, just because it's beautiful. So, um, so yeah, I'll keep you posted on that, but I'm very excited that, uh, she's interested in learning to knit. Okay. Let's move on to books. I just finished this week, the Christmas boutique by Jennifer Cheverini. And this was such a perfect book to read at this time. She released it last year after many years of not doing an Elm Creek quilts book, because I think her, um, from what I understand, her fans were really clamoring for an update on what was going on with those characters. And um, as a person who I've read all of the Elm Creek quilt books over the last 10 plus years, and you know, a lot of them are, are pretty vague in my memory at this point. So what was kind of cool about this book is that it explored the current characters and what had you know and a lot of their backstories so they, they, she kind of incorporated that so you're like oh yeah i kind of remember that that happened and and because you know we don't remember a lot of the the what 20 other books i think this is the 21st book in the series um it was very fun to not only revisit um the characters and what was going on at elm creek manor and um how they host this christmas boutique but how each character plays into it and how their past plays into it so um if you can uh, get a copy of that i got it from my library it was a, a very fun easy christmas read as my audiobook, I've been listening to The Lost Quilter from Jennifer Cheverini, and um, that has been good. It was kind of interesting because <laughs> I kept getting a little confused because I was reading one and listening to one at the same time, and it would take me a little bit sometimes to, to <laughs> figure out, um, okay, where am I in this story? But the, the Lost Quilter is one of the historical Elm Creek books and um, I've always said that the the historical ones are kind of my favorite and they still feature Elm Creek Manor but uh, you know like a hundred years before and the Lost Quilter is um, the follow-up story actually to um, another story which I'm guessing maybe that one was the runaway I'm not really sure maybe the runaway quilter I can't remember but it features a character Joanna who is a slave and um at some point, you know, there's a whole underground railroad and using quilts to point the way, which I think we've proved is didn't really didn't really happen. But wouldn't it be fun to pretend that it did? Um, but this one, this story takes place when 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 she's a slave, and you know, it's it, I think it's kind of a good thing to be reminded every once in a while about how absolutely horrible that was you know we all go oh yes that slavery was a terrible thing but when you're really confronted by the things that actually happened it just it just kind of turns your stomach so in some ways it's been um kind of a hard book to read or to listen to but it's it's very enjoyable on the, on the other hand <laughs> it's i'm giving you mixed messages here but um anyways it's her story i'm not uh, about halfway through it right now and uh definitely definitely recommend it the um other book that I'm not reading this year, but uh, I am finding from all these lists of best Christmas books that I'm not the only person um, that loves is the book Winter Solstice by Rosamund Pilcher. And I found out that there is a movie of it. So I'm hunting that down. I'm having trouble finding it. There's also apparently a movie of The Shell Seekers, which is Rosamund Pilcher's more famous book featuring Angela Lansbury, which is, I think, a a fairly good casting job. So I am hunting for those two. I have not found them yet, but I do know they exist. Um, so th that's the, gonna be kind of fun. But I am slightly tempted as we just come into the last week before Christmas to pull out winter solstice, as I sometimes do, and just kind of open it up somewhere and start reading from there. 
<laughs> the beginning of that book is always a little bit hard for me to read. Um, so sometimes I start halfway and finish it. And then I always go back and start at the beginning and read up to the halfway point. It's kind of a weird thing. Um, so that's it for, for books right now. Um, I am enjoying reading paper books at night. I think I talked about, I know I've talked about that before, that I, I have no issue with reading ebooks. But I think that reading a paper book before bedtime definitely helps me sleep better. And, um, and so that's been kind of nice because I have not read paper books for a long time. As a matter of fact, I'm reminded right now that I have two paper books that I got for Christmas last year that I have started, both of them, and never finished. The Giver of Stars by Jojo Moyes. And I'm trying to remember the other one. I can't remember right now. But anyways, um, I'll be happy to kind of pull those out. <laughs> And finish reading them and the other one that I'm reading right now that I'm now that I'm done with the Christmas boutique is um, all change um, the last one in the Cazalette Chronicles which I have not finished yet so I um, with two weeks off I'm really looking for forward to reading during daylight hours <laughs> and not for the five minutes before I fall asleep at night so moving on to shows this is the time for Christmas shows and Christmas movies right well we have a hard time agreeing on those in our family. Last weekend, Chloe and I watched Christmas in Connecticut, which was uh, an old movie with um, Barbara Stanwyck. It was very fun um, about a columnist. She played a columnist for a magazine where she she reminded me of like a current homesteading blogger, like a soul mama kind of blog where she wrote all about um, her farm and her baby and, you know, like all these meals that she was cooking and things that she was sewing and all this kind of stuff. Well, she's really like writing these as a single woman in a New York apartment. Like it's a complete character made, you know, just put on. And she even has a bunch of recipes, which are supplied by this, um, this owner of this restaurant that's like downstairs. And so um, what happens is that she is asked to host a returning um, soldier from the war for a weekend um, at this, at a farm, you know, it's like to, to give him the full treatment. And she really doesn't know anything about really what she's doing and so she has to sort of put this on for the weekend and of course it's hilarious but it does totally remind me of like you know like it's funny that this was happening so long ago I don't know this is like for maybe 1945 or something um, because you kind of wonder about like bloggers these days like how much of this is really true and how much are you really putting on so that was really fun um like I mentioned before um I, I shared on the Facebook group this article I came across that lists the Christmas episodes for like favorite British shows. So um, there's several Christmas episodes from Midsummer Murders. Um, there's one from Foil's War. There's one from The Detectorist, which I watched. I mentioned, I, I failed to see how it was Christmassy. Maybe just they mentioned at some point it was Christmas time. Um, Mrs. Fisher's M Murders or whatever that shows, M Mrs. Fisher's Mysteries, maybe. Um, watched one of those. So um, that has just been really fun. And I feel like sometimes watching Christmas episodes of shows is something that's a little more palatable to, to our family with older kids. So last night we actually watched two episodes of um, Christmas episodes of The New Girl, which is a show my daughter likes. I've never watched it before, but you know, Zoe Dachanel is adorable. So that was fun. We've definitely done this in the past with Christmas episodes of The Office. One year, Mindy Kaling on her Instagram just gave a list of here are all the, the, the episodes of the Christmas episodes. Um, Friends and Parks and Rec have been moved off of Netflix, so we cannot watch the Christmas episodes of those, which is sad. But anyways, that's just been kind of fun way. Um, I don't know, you know, I, we're kind of this year a little over watching It's a Wonderful Life and Elf and, you know, things like that. So this is kind of really... Um, filled the bill there. I also finished uh, 800 Words. I cannot recommend the show highly enough. It's on Acorn. I've talked about it before, about a, a widower who moves his family from Australia to New Zealand um, after his wife dies. And it's a really quirky little village. And, um, and he's a columnist. So um, the premise of the show um, is, you know, that he's sort of writing the column about what's going on in his life. And they always have to be exactly 800 words. Isn't that kind of the premise of, now that I think about it, do you remember the show Eight is Enough? 
<laughs> with Dick Van Patten. Wasn't he? He was a columnist, and I think he was he wrote about his family too. So kind of a, a similar thing there. But that was really fun. I wish there were more episodes, more seasons of that. Um, and then I moved away from Acorn a little bit onto The Crown, which I am a little late in watching. Are you guys watching The Crown? Oh my goodness. Um, I do, I've heard that the Queen, the Crown in general, is very upset about this season. And I don't blame them. Um, because this season reflects well on absolutely no one. <laughs> Not the Queen, not Diana, not Charles, Camilla, none of the royal children, like the Prince Philip, who I don't like anyways. Um, And I know that um, I've I've heard that what they would like, and I think it would be a bad idea, is for them to put a disclaimer before each episode that says, this is drama, this is not historical fact, because it's so easy to fall into the trap of this really happened because it's anchored by events we that are fact you know uh charles and diana's wedding and the you know the birth of their children and their um, triumphant tour of australia i watched the episode where they go to australia um and where diana was an absolute triumph and they do this dance and stuff and i i went and i watched the actual dance they do the dance better on the show the crown than they did in real life i will tell you that um but i just every time i watch that show i'm just like oh my gosh these people they're all terrible. So, um, you know, so I am, I'm enjoying the show, but, uh, yeah, there's, there's like not a likable character (laughs) in there. And I guess it's just a weird experience because these we're living through years that I remember, you know, as opposed to, um, previous seasons of the crown, which are just, were all new to me. Now it kind of makes me wonder, I, I, almost every episode of the crown, I go Google something to find out like, what really happened. Um, And like I said, you know, there are anchor points that happen, but what we don't know are all these conversations, you know, and the relationships between um, that are just so, so questionable. So um, that's kind of what I've been uh, watching lately. I would look some, love some, some new um, recommendations. I have a bunch of things on my watch list for, for Acorn, including, oh, I can't remember what it's called. Something Jane, um, the woman who is in A Place to Call Home, the main character from A Place to Call Home, has a show where she's a judge. Um, and so that's on my watch list for Acorn too. So that should be pretty fun. Let's finish this up with, this is usually the homemaking um, segment of the podcast. And this is going to be just more like the personal development segment of the podcast. So we're coming into the end of 2020, which has been a trying year for absolutely everyone at various levels, but I'm nobody has escaped unscathed here, I'm sure. Um, and we're, you know, we've got the vaccine, we're going into 2021, we are hopeful um, and, and looking forward to some things opening up and being more social. It's going to be a while though. And so um, during the last couple of weeks of the year, I think it's, a, you know, I personally like to take the opportunity to reflect on 2020, make some plans, you know, reflect on the year before and make some plans for the coming year. And this is a little bit easier for me if I've got some, um, some guidelines. So a few years ago, I bought power sheets. I've talked about that. Um, and I love them. And truth be told, I've only bought them the one year. <laughs> Because they're like, it's like $75. It's an investment. I am not unhappy that I did it because I'm so happy to have that framework. But last year and this year, I'm just using those prompts in um, a notebook to help me figure out um, what what happened and what I want to happen. And it's really fun to go back when you actually have to, when you sit down and think about what are the good things that happened this year? You know, we, we all know what the bad things are. But, you know, for me personally, this has been the best year for my business ever. And um, so that's like one uh, kind of amazing thing that has come out of 2020 for me personally, even though it was not the plan for all the kids to move home. And, you know, all there's a, disappointments left and right there. But we got a little extra time as a family that I think we will always treasure. Um, so, you know, so there are some good things. Um, this podcast has really grown. I've really connected with a lot of you. Um, I've read a lot of good books this year, just things like that. There's some good things that have happened. And it's good for us to take some time to reflect on that. So, um I'll put a link for the power sheets in the show notes. That's one way to do it. Um, 
that there are there are like i don't know 50 pages of you know things that you can help you kind of work through and process you know um what what you want out of life what your dreams are and i know the first year that i did the power sheets i thought that it was the year that I was applying for was going to be all about like growing my blog and things like that. And by the time I got through all of that prep work, I kind of realized that that was not important to me. There were other things on my life on a more personal level that um, were a better um, way to spend my time. So that was kind of interesting. And I'll never kind of forget that, that, you know, when you really um, kind of dig in, you don't actually know maybe what the results are going to be. But if that level of, of prep <laughs> intimidates you, then um, the passion planner is maybe another way for you to go. And the passion planner, I'll, again, I'll put a link in the show notes, um, they have they have like free downloads so you can get the you know some PDF printouts of how to do that it's a very similar style of, of processing and planning and reflecting as a power sheets but um, it's just not quite as intensive and, and you can get them for free for downloading and then if you want um, if you like that then you can buy the passion planner that has all that stuff you know in a in a bound book with all your with a schedule you know with a daily planner kind of thing all kind of built in so those are two things that you might want to look at um, that I have found value in, in both of those and um, the other thing is this I feel like this is a good time to sort of what's the word I want to use edit to, to figure out what's bringing you joy and what's not. Um, I've talked the last few episodes about how um, I have a pretty uh, complicated relationship with social media. And lately I have just kind of, as I've been looking through social media, I'm just like uninspired. I'm uninspired. I just feel like I'm seeing the same things over and over. So I kind of um, re invigorated my uh my personal instagram account um not my my i have my kristen esther which is really a lot of my sewing and podcasts and things like that and i love that account and i've got some great followers and i follow a lot of good people but it's very quilty um in you know in, in its cultivation which has not really been inspiring me lately so on my it's called everyday kristen account um i it's a whole all the people i follow are um either sort of simple living, um, kind of natural food bloggers, a lot of illustration. Um, and it's, it's just like pure inspiration um, on, a, on a personal level. And I've been spending more time over there. I'm not really posting anything. I'm just lurking <laughs> other accounts. Um, so that has been, been really good. And I've unfollowed on Facebook. I've unfollowed a bunch of groups that I'm just like done with. And um and so it, I just kind of encourage you to to, to cultivate, if, if you're going to be on social media, cultivate um, a, a scrolling experience that doesn't make you feel bad in any way. Um, I kind of realized on Instagram, this is so dumb, that there were certain accounts that when they came up, I like literally would feel myself like rolling my eyes going, ugh, I'm just like, why am I not unfollowing this? <laughs> You know, it's like, it was like this constant prick every time until I realized I am con in control of this. So, um, so yeah, I'm just kind of looking for um, some just really slow down and sort of peace in, in that area of my life right now. Okay, so lastly, I would love to thank you guys. Um, I've got some reviews. So thank you so much for these. That really helps people find the podcast. And, and the podcast has really grown this year. And I don't exactly know why. I have no control over that. But all I can say is I think that you guys leaving reviews and if you're sharing with, with friends and, and other people that you think might enjoy it, I really appreciate that. Um, so I would like to thank Megan161, and TMCCMC. And I know you have left more than one review and I really appreciate that. So thank you so much. Um, most people talk about in the reviews about how this is, you know, it feels like a conversation with a friend and that is exactly what I want because that's the kind of connection that I, I really enjoy. And I love it when you guys um, reach out and leave comments on the show notes or reach out on Instagram or Facebook. Um, in the Simple Handmade Everyday Facebook group, I always post the episode and I love it when you guys come back and comment in that thread. That's always really fun that we can get little conversations going about stuff that you've, you've 
heard on the podcast here. So with that, I would just like to say thank you. Um, You guys have really been um, such a safety net for me through 2020. And I'm just so glad that you're here. And I will see you guys all in 2021. You can find me online at my blog, Simple Handmade Every Day, on Instagram at Kristen Esser, and please consider joining the Simple Handmade Every Day Facebook group to keep the conversation going.